Hi, I'm going to talk about the HR diagram, which is a critical tool for understanding about the lives of stars. So first, how do star clusters teach us about stars, especially the lives of stars? Many stars are in clusters. The sun is not in a star cluster, but uh, many stars are especially formed in star clusters. And the star cluster forms out of the gas in the galaxy, the gas and dust in the Milky Way, as a group of stars. And they, the stars in any particular cluster were formed out of the same cloud and hence are roughly made of the same mix of elements. Stars were formed in a particular cluster, were formed about the same time because the star cluster itself forms quickly and are thus all the stars are about the same age. The stars in a particular cluster are grouped together so they're all about the same distance from us. So the distance to a cluster may be very difficult to determine. The stars in a star cluster are too far away uh, to be determined by parallax in most cases. And so, however, since the stars are grouped together, they are uh, roughly about the same distance from us. And so if we uh, assume that they are all the same distance from us, we can still compare them directly without knowing the actual distance. Another feature is that if we are able to determine the distance to say just any one star in a star cluster, we're able to get an estimate of the distance of all of those stars. So, what about the HR diagram? We know how to determine the color and temperature and the spectral type of stars from the spectrum using uh, spectroscopy and photometry to measure the color, either of which gives us the temperature of the star. The apparent magnitude, that's defined as the brightness that a star appears to be from Earth if we uh, uh, just as in the sky, as in a particular night, we look up and we see some stars are brighter than others, so some stars have a brighter apparent magnitude than other stars. If we determine the distance of a star using parallax, which can be done for nearby stars, we can determine the star's absolute magnitude. The absolute magnitude is the true brightness of the true magnitude of a star and it's equivalent to the luminosity which is the total amount of energy emitted by that star. So the absolute magnitude is the star's intrinsic or true magnitude. C, here we can learn much about stars by looking at a plot of A and B. Here, so if we plot the uh, color or the temperature of a star or the spectral type, any one of those three, and as the horizontal axis and as the vertical axis, we plot the luminosity or the absolute magnitude. If the star, if the, if you're doing this for a cluster of stars, we can even use the apparent magnitude because all the stars are at the same distance. But typically we need to determine the distance using parallax or some other method and find the absolute magnitude or luminosity. Once we plot this on a diagram, this is called the HR diagram. So the HR diagram is simply a plot of the um, the absolute magnitude versus the temperature, color or spectral type of the star. So here's an example where these are plotted. The temperature is plotted from the hottest 
on the left to the coolest. This may seem strange, but uh, this is the way it's done. We go with the sequence O, B, A, F, G, K, M, where we have the hottest to the coolest. And this is also, these are blue, yellow in the middle. The sun is a G2 type star and M on the right. What, uh, and then we have the absolute magnitude. The sun is uh, about approximately plus five in this scale, which is one here. And this is exactly the luminosity compared to the sun. So the sun is located right here on a group of stars called the main sequence. So we see that most stars, in fact, 90% of all stars are found when on the, on the main sequence of this diagram. And we want to make sure to understand that this is not any kind of path. Stars, once on the main sequence, will remain more or less in the same position there. Um, they do not move up and down the main sequence. But nine out of 10 of all stars that we see are on this main sequence part of this diagram. Some of the other star groupings that we have are called the giants. And the giants are about 10 times to 100 times the size of the sun. One thing that we learn about this diagram is that size increases as you move toward the top right corner and decreases towards the bottom left corner. So another group of stars are the supergiants up here. These are sometimes called red supergiants. The largest giants are a thousand times the size of the sun. Over here in the bottom left corner, we have white dwarfs. These are bluish, are bluish white stars, and uh, they are very small. They're about the size of the Earth, or only about 1% the size or radius of the sun. All the main sequence stars, well, they vary in size somewhat, with the smallest ones being located down here and the larger ones being located here. But roughly, uh, compared to the giants and the white dwarfs, there's not very much change in size along the main sequence. So the first thing that we can see is, as I've described, the fact that in addition to uh, finding and learning about the temperature, spectral class, or um, the apparent magnitude or luminosity or absolute magnitude. In addition to knowing those and just plotting them on the graph, we get something for free, and that is the size of the star. So we can explain that as follows. We can see that from the, uh, of Stefan Boltzmann law, we have a, uh, the relationship between the size of the star and the amount of light it emits and the temperature. And so an object that is small, like a white dwarf, but hot, could uh, also be uh, not very bright because since it's small, even though it's hot, normally hot objects we think of being emitting a lot of light and being very bright, the smallness makes it down here in the diagram so that it is faint. So we can think of the diagram as being faint is down here and bright as the top. So all of these are bright and then all of these are faint. So the white dwarfs are faint yet hot. And um, 
the cool ones along the main sequence over here are much smaller than ones up here because we can see these are the same color. So these M star main sequence, sometimes called M dwarfs, these M dwarfs are much fainter than the M and K giants. And that is not because they're a different temperature, they're the same temperature. We know that here, we see the temperature along here. It's that the giants are much bigger. So since they have much more surface, that uh, is emitting light, they are emitting much more luminosity than the dwarfs. We can see these red dwarfs are only emitting 1% uh, of the light of the sun, the luminosity of the sun, whereas these giants are 100 times the luminosity of the sun and the supergiants up to 10,000 times the luminosity of the sun. So we can see that size is something we can learn right away from the HR diagram. Something else, we look at other kinds of clusters and we plot only the stars from the cluster. These are called color magnitude diagrams. It's effectively the same thing as the HR diagram, but we don't uh, involve the distance because all the stars are the same distance. Here we see only the main sequence and we see the main sequence moving all the way up and we see some stars may have moved uh, from the main sequence over here and uh, there are some stars that are not yet on the main sequence, they have not yet joined the main sequence. But we can see that this is a very young cluster, it's known as the Pleiades, also M45, and what we can learn about stars is how a young cluster could evolve into an old cluster, or how a young star evolves into an old star. And we can tell here, this is, uh, the diagram looks a, a good bit different, but it is the same, and we have the magnitude here, the absolute magnitude, the color along here. The color in this case is also shown as the color of the dots. So that's all that's really different here. And, but we see that for a globular cluster, we can see lots of very bright, very bright red stars. You see many, many bright red stars there. Well, at least a, a number of bright red ones and many other blue ones that are fairly bright. That would be these over here. The really bright red ones are these up here and many multitudes of fainter red stars that you can't see so well. So I have many, many red stars that are pretty faint, and I can see them if I look very closely, but uh, many of them are too faint to see uh, as popping out in the picture. The ones that we can see very well are the bright red ones up here and the blue ones there. So this one has a very different kind of shape. It doesn't have the main sequence fully formed. It only, only has the main sequence here. The rest of the main sequence in the previous diagram, looking back, the, re the main sequence went all the way up here. There were no other stars anywhere else in the diagram. Now the main sequence only goes up to here, and many stars have uh, populated a region over here in the diagram and even over here. So this will tell us about these stars. And so the first thing that we, I will just point out is that the ones that are over here, that were over here in the past, have now become large and red. And that's what we see. And um, those, so those stars have changed and become red giants and red supergiant stars. So th that's the introduction to the HR diagram.